Joining us now, Webb Bush Securities Head of Technology Research, Dan Ives. Dan, it's great to have you here on set. Great to be here. There's never a dearth of information in the tech sector for us to talk about, but I do want to start with a Microsoft piece of this um, because we always talk about whether the market feels like this is 1999, poised for a 2000, and here we are talking about Microsoft up for regulatory review. That sure feels like 99, 2000. Look, if Khan was staying, that would be a different situation. I think the view of us and the view of many on the street is that Khan's days, the FTC, are numbered. I think you ultimately get a more, we'll call it even-keeled, business-friendly uh, sort of chair of the FTC in there. And, and we just think Bark's worse than a bite when it comes to Microsoft. Microsoft went through that battle in the 90s versus, you know, DOJ and U.S. government ultimately won. And, and look, and you're definitely seeing the strong get stronger in terms of big tech. And as much as this is really going to be a UFC battle that continues to really play out between big tech, but I just think when it's all said and done, the, the, the noise is going to be more than the reality, not just from Microsoft, but I think even when it comes to Google and others. Mm. How much is going to hinge, though, on the Trump administration, the picks for DOJ, antitrust, and FTC? Because there are a number of names floated for each of those positions, and not all of them are, I would say, Rah rah, let tech go wild. Some of them are much more focused on antitrust and a, I'll call it maybe potentially a similar approach to what we've seen in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think on DOJ, you definitely get someone probably in between. I mean, look, Vance is obviously anti tech, so you're going to definitely have someone that's, that's a little on the aggressive side toward tech. But I think the big issue is on FTC because Khan, for big tech, it has been a nightmare in terms of con the FTC. Her being gone, which we believe is ultimately will be the, the next step when it comes to January, that's bullish for tech. I think, look, a big reason when Trump came in, when you think about con out the FTC, that's bullish for big tech. I think less regulations. And then who's at the table right next to Trump? It's Musk. And I think that's going to also play a big role unofficially in terms of some of these picks and where this all goes. But I continue to think in terms of this AI revolution, it is 10 p.m. at that party that goes to 4 a.m. And I don't see any of these appointments that's changing that party or that party closes early. I think we have a tech bull market that goes well into 2025, 2026. And I think a lot of this sort of noise that we see here, more opportunities to own these names rather than the time to get nervous. Do you buy a Tesla here then, given the rally we've seen, the torrid rally we've seen this month? I think get the popcorn out. Because I believe Tesla's a stock that could ultimately double from here over the next 18 months. It's been obviously a parabolic move, but as me and you have talked about, autonomous itself, we think it's worth a trillion dollars. So when you think today, I view Tesla as the most undervalued AI name in the market. It is not ridiculous. It might almost be conservative to think, could this be a five, $600 stock? As the autonomous ultimately plays out, I think the margin story is definitely stabilized here. And I think investors, look, the haters continue to hate it. They hate it at $50, they'll hate it here. But I think we sit here, and this will be sort of a golden star, you know, in terms of when you look at the market in 2025, in terms of what we see for Tesla, I believe $2 trillion on the horizon.